Hi, I'm Tim Conrad, Public Information Officer with the Caribou Regional District, here with Mike McCulley of the BC Wildfire Service. Um, I'm just going to give you a few updates on our, uh, things on our end. Uh, there's been no changes to alerts and orders uh, for the Caribou Regional District since our last video, um, but do keep an eye on our Facebook page and Twitter uh, for any uh, updates there. As well, uh, the out in the Tatla Clean and Clean area, uh, we have pass-through permits available for Highway 20. These are pass-through permits only. Um, they are available at the CD, CRD office. Uh, you can call or drop in. Uh, the number to call is 1-866-759-4977. You can also pick them up at the Anaheim Lake, uh, in, in Anaheim Lake at the Chicolton Anaheim School. Uh, both of these locations are open 8 to 4.30. And uh, we do have the ability, if you can only call in, uh, to send the picture by email so that you can uh, uh, get the permit uh, right away. So, um, Mike, tell us about uh, the weather and uh, how that's affected fire behavior. Yeah, thanks, Tim. So uh, I'm here today at the Caribou Fire Center. We're standing outside the front door at our uh, public briefing map. Um, obviously, the weather is the story of the day. We are very happy today to say we did get some precipitation throughout the whole entire Caribou Fire Center. The mounts were quite variable. Uh, I know uh, that there were still trace uh, mounts up to the uh, you know, in the Cheswick area, uh, but over in Clean and Clean, one of our more troubling spots, we did see, you know, six or seven millimeters of rain in that area. So it has allowed our crews to make some good progress there and some of the other fires, which I'll talk about in a minute, Tim. Sure. Um, generally speaking, though, we did see some wind. It did cause the fire behavior to pick up in the Plateau fire as well as in the southern part of the Hansville fire. And uh, the precipitation is certainly helping us, though. We're seeing more humid conditions this morning a little calmer winds and that's uh, what we're going to expect through today so we'll be working really hard to take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, going forward we are looking at a couple days of warm dry weather. I know it's hard to believe that right now it's still quite cool mm -hmm. and very overcast but it is going to clear up. Uh, it is going to dry off a little bit and then further out into uh, Wednesday or Thursday though we are looking at another system coming through. Um, like any weather forecast the challenge is what's it going to bring for precipitation and what's it going to bring for wind. Uh, the usual pattern applies to this part of the world. We are likely to see very little precipitation out in the west, but that's where the majority of the winds are. Uh, you know, and I hope that helps people understand why these fires tend to be a little more challenging, challenging for us lately than say the fires around Williams Lake where the winds have been slightly calmer, precipitation has been higher. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So uh, any other updates uh, on anything else that you can tell us about? Yeah, I'll just kind of relate that weather back into the fire behavior again. Like I've said, we have made some good progress on the clean to clean fire, although it is you know, still active and does continue to go to the east. It does allow us to uh, really engage with the Caribou Regional District. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking uh, you know, regularly through the day today about some of those evacuation orders and alerts. And uh, as I've said from day one, one of our top priorities has been the highway corridor. We're gonna be looking very hard at that area today. As soon as we think that's safe uh, to open up, we're, we're gonna make that recommendation to you folks. Um, we're not there yet, but we're, we're working really hard on that. Um, in the Plateau fire, uh, again, pretty active on all fronts, but not a lot of major growth outside of the control lines. And I just wanted to explain to folks a little bit about what the Plateau fire meant versus what the Plateau complex meant. Uh, a complex is an area with a, a area on the map delineated by a line that a particular command team would manage. So the complex is being managed by a uh, command team just west of Quinell. Uh, they are responsible for the northern half of the Plateau fire as well as the uh, Cluskoil fire up in the north. So again, the complex is the area that that command team is responsible for. Uh, we also have uh, the Plateau south portion that another command team out in Punsey is managing. So that's how we split that fire up. And you'll see that on our Fires of Note webpage now. When you go in and look, uh, all of those fires previously, the Bazico fire, uh, Bishop Bluffs, uh, most of those fires that were organized in their own Fire of Note are now coordinated into one, and it is called the Plateau Fire. Within there, you will find two pieces of information. You'll find Plateau North and Plateau South. And the reason for that is that we have two information officers feeding that, uh, those two pieces within that Fire of Note. Uh, it'll really help us to give you folks a little better idea of what's going on, be a little bit more specific about what things mean. So again, the difference between a fire and a complex is a complex is an area that a command team manages, whereas the fire itself is called the Plateau Fire. So I hope that's, uh, I hope that's clear for folks. Um, beyond that, Tim, uh, out in uh, Quinell Lakes, we know that we took a little bit more precipitation there as well. We've seen relatively quiet fire behavior out there. Again, mostly rank one, not a lot of growth uh, in those areas. 
Um, similar in Elephant Hill, we did see some precipitation down there, although it is a challenging fire, uh, active again, but uh, generally staying within the control lines at this point. So um, that's sort of the news on the fires, Tim. Excellent. So I did want to ask one question, that sure. so pe people may see this. There's a very straight line here uh, in the plateau fire. Is the fire really shaped like that? No, the fire certainly isn't shaped like that. And what people have to understand is that we did combine these fires. Uh, and they weren't exactly all merged together into one. They were very close, but we had a hard time following the perimeters of those lines. So this is a mapping exercise, certainly. It does delineate the perimeter of the fire, uh, you know, from a mapping perspective. But like most of these fires, there's lots of unburned fuel still remaining in there. Just because the line is there doesn't mean the front of the fire is burned nice and clean right up to that edge. Certainly that's not the case. Yeah. Um, as you can see by the other portions in the map, that's more uh, common what a fire perimeter would look like with wind driven fingers and uh, different pieces poking out. So uh, that's why that square looks like that. It will change over time as we get out there and uh, get some aircraft on the fire, get some boots on the ground doing some GPS tracking. You'll see that perimeter slightly change and eventually that square line will likely disappear and become a, a real perimeter. So generally a mapping exercise at this point, Tim. Excellent. Anything else to add or are we all good? No, I just want to, uh, you know, tell folks that although we're really encouraged by the precipitation today, we certainly are. I know that at the fire center, it was a bit of a boost for morale. Certainly it does allow us to work hard and get a handle on things a little bit. Um, again, a couple more warm, dry days coming though. Uh, we are desperately hoping that uh, next week's system brings us even more precipitation uh, and not so much wind. So every day we move forward is a day closer to the end of the summer season, but mm -hmm. we're a long ways out yet. Uh, please keep paying attention and thanks again for your support. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Mike. Join us tomorrow for another daily update.